Well, I think the you know economic outlook for for the global economy um, is looking positive, particularly in the emerging markets, and certainly in terms of an upturn in activity that we're seeing. We're seeing increased activity coming out of Asia, um, the Middle East, and indeed Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America in particular. So very positive, very strong. Traditional markets for us, US is recovering well, so looking very good. And the UK is a safe harbour for a lot of you know, our clients who are looking to invest in a market that's strong, well regulated and it seems to be performing very well, so very positive. Um, Jersey has historically had a lot of private equity in real estate and I think that will continue to be a big part of what we do. Uh, within that, uh, infrastructure is something that is really quite topical at the moment, quite hot, um, and um, debt funds is something we're seeing as well. Aside from that, there are more interesting assets, but you know, like the clean tech, like, um, but, but we're, we're not going to see those overtake uh, the more mainstream asset classes, but those are an increasingly important part of the sort of diversity of investment structuring that you can do um, through, through Jersey. Emerging markets growth is going to be very, very fragmented. It, it, you know, different factors drive different places. I think the very exciting part for me is probably Africa, where there's just such a huge sort of um, mixture of, of, of factors that are coming together. It's a real sweet spot. So we're seeing significant growth in the sort of growing middle class in a lot of African economies. So that's where I think there'll be particular activity. I think the asset classes that are going to generate the best growth in the next few years remain real estate. Um, in times of uncertainty, people still undoubtedly um, uh, like to have bricks and mortar and they like to be able to go and stand um, in their asset and look at it. Uh, and we certainly still see a lot of activity around that. Um, private equity um, in terms of some of the uh, emerging European markets and emerging markets elsewhere in the world um, is a, an area of huge growth and interest. So I think those two principally but we do ourselves a lot of work with clean tech um, it's had a little bit of a rough ride uh, in terms of some um, jurisdictional specific challenges such as Spain um, however there's still a great interest in that and there is you know, an energy crisis looming out there and people are undoubtedly looking for alternative um, energy as, a, as an asset class and, and there's a lot of interest in that. Um, I think it's a mix. It's, it's going to be the businesses which reflect the, the growth of, of, of the markets in, in those countries. So, you know, everything that serves a growing middle class, whether it's infrastructure assets, whether it's commercial businesses that serve retail public, um, whether it's uh, inflation proof assets like, like real estate. Um, it's also going to be some interesting alternatives in Africa, things like debt funds going into Africa, where, where banks maybe aren't in a position to do the uh, the credit lending that they need to i think as far as infrastructure is concerned again you know um, investors are looking for yield they're looking for real hard assets and they're looking for inflation proofing so infrastructure again is a very very hot topic at the moment and one that's attracting huge amounts of money we're seeing people you know coming out of um other asset classes in particular out of gilts or bones and actually moving into infrastructure to get that, that pick up that they're looking for um, as they believe that there's less value perhaps going forward in, in, in bonds and, and gilts. And I think finally the, the other aspect to look at is, is debt funds. Again, you know, in the past five years the, the top 30 debt managers in the world have raised over $320 billion worth of, uh, of commitments and currently there's something like 200 funds out there raising another $114 billion worth of commitments to put into that, that marketplace. Yeah, it's interesting uh, what's going to drive the market over the next couple of years. I think we're still in a phase where government policy is playing a big part in economics and, and the, the behaviour of markets. Um, uh, low interest rates, quantitative easing have, have, have made um, uh, have forced people to look at interesting assets to try and garner some sort of return. Uh, and our big question is when that's reined back in and when that's eventually turned off, what will that mean? Um, but I, I think there's a real sense of optimism returning to, to investors. Which, so I think I, we, we can see a, or I can see a sort of a managed progression back to normality uh, and, and some long-term long good prospects.